It's finally week one of the NFL. We're going to be talking commanders and bucks today. Uh, but first, a couple promos. Last week of the uh, free week promo. It's an all-access special. I believe you get an extra week on top of 14 days. Uh, I, and that one's going to be up for a week. And then the rest of this week, three days, all access, just $49. Uh, two of the great specials going on for any of the handicappers uh, over at wagertalk.com. And then, of course, like and subscribe for us to the channel so we can keep bringing you these free picks. So, uh, Commanders and Bucks, I have a 4% NFL play up on my page um, for Sunday. It's not this one, uh, but this is on my short list. And I'm strongly considering the commanders here. Uh, you know, I'm seeing three plus 105. I'm sorry, three plus three minus 105. Um, a lot of places. I, I do think there are probably three and a halfs out there. Uh, I think there, you know, we might see a few more three and a halfs. I think if this goes back to like three and a half being widely available, uh, I might have no choice but but to, to sort of jump in and take a shot here. So, I guess my general consensus on the Bucks is they're a fade for me this year. They were a huge surprise last year. Um, you know, finished with a winning record, got into the playoffs, but then they just demolished the Eagles in the first round. Uh, gave the the Lions a, a all they could handle um, in the divisional round. Ended up losing that game, I think, thirty one to twenty three. Um, but I, I think they're probably going to regress from last year. I actually wouldn't be surprised if the Bucks come nowhere near making the playoffs again this season. Um, you know, something I thought was really interesting. I do a spaces a couple times a week over on my, my Twitter page uh, with my good friend, Freddie Mills. And, and he brought up a really good point regarding this game. The Bucks last year in third and long um, were as successful as any team in the league. Uh, it seemed like every time they were in third and nine, third and 10, third and 11, they managed to convert. Uh, but it's likely not going to be the case this year. Uh, so something, like two things. One, the Bucks are going to be breaking in a new offensive coordinator. And two, it's a very suspect offensive line. So you add those two things to the fact that Baker Mayfield is not the most mobile quarterback. He does hang on to the ball sometimes too long. And, you know, I, I wonder, I'm kind of, of with him in the point that, like, you got to wonder if if the Bucs don't regress in that in that department. Um, you know, just converting on third down, which, as you guys know, is is huge in football. Uh, you know, over the course of a, a season, uh, if you're hitting third and eight, third and nine at a high rate, it's going to drastically sort of skew re your results as opposed to a team, uh, you know, that's that's not converting those because, you know, you're not converting third and eight, third and nine. Chances are it's pretty much turnover. So I thought that was a really interesting stat uh, that that's anti bucks. Uh, the other thing that that makes me anti Bucks is the defense. Uh, you lose Shaq Barrett to retirement. You lose Devin White to to the Eagles, and now suddenly that really strong Bucks run defense uh, might not be as strong, especially in the middle of the field in that linebacker position right there. And that probably means that the secondary is exposed. Now this Bucks secondary wasn't great last year. But their front seven bailed them out in a lot of cases, um, allowed them to, you know, sort of cheat in places because they were so good against stopping the run, containing mobile quarterbacks, so on and so forth. And, and if that doesn't happen this year, which is very possible, um, it, it all could sort of unravel for them, um, which is, again, just my overall assessment of the Bucks. It's hard to say if it's going to happen in this game, but. The commanders certainly have, you know, some of the pieces to be able to test that. Uh, specifically, rookie quarterback Jaden Daniels, who will make his first start in this game. Now, he had a strong preseason. Uh, I think there's upside there. Of course, playing your first, um, you know, real game in the NFL is is always different than playing against backups in the preseason. Um, but I think there's a reason to believe that Daniels could, you know, potentially overachieve this year or at least be formidable um in his position which is starting quarterback of the commanders so i i guess i'm not like fully sold one way or the other on him yet uh but i wouldn't be that surprised if he had some success here now i think where the commanders really improved is on the defensive side of the ball 
I it looks like their front seven is much stronger than it was last year. Secondary still has some questions. Like they're definitely still going to be vulnerable to, you know, elite passing attacks. But how it, you know can Baker Mayfield get the ball downfield here? if he doesn't have time to push the ball downfield, I think that's where this game will ultimately be decided. You know, can the bucks hold it? Can the bucks offensive line hold up long enough to allow Mayfield to get the ball downfield to his receivers, in which case they'll probably have some good one-on-one matchups against the commander secondary. If not, I could see the bucks having some trouble moving the football. And when you, when you sort of add all of it up, I don't know that the bucks are three points better than the commanders. So I certainly would rather have the points in this one. If I was going to, if I was going to get involved with it, it's certainly one that is still sort of on my radar have not bet this yet, but um, commanders plus three is, is the way I'm thinking about going here. If it gets to three and a half, I I might have to just say, you know, I might have to just jump in. Uh, But this is one I'm looking for for Sunday. I like the commanders right now. It's plus three. I think three and a half minus one ten might be the uh, the the buy spot for me. I know that was available early in the week or a week ago, more than a week ago at one point. I think if it got back there, I'd probably have to take a shot with the Commanders. Uh, but that's the way I'm looking for for this one on Saturday, on Sunday. I have a four percent NFL best bet that is already locked in for Sunday in a different game, and we'll be adding others throughout the week. If you like college football, I've already posted two college football videos to YouTube this week. One of them is a 4% play. So check that out over on the wager talk YouTube channel. And don't forget to follow me on all the platforms, Adam trigger.wt, especially TikTok, where I'll basically handicap games for you on demand, trying to get the follower count up there. So uh, come visit me on all the platforms, wt.buzz slash at wager talk for all my plays. And let's have a great week one of the NFL.